Okay, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's well. Happy Tuesday. Beautiful day here in the neighborhood. We are charting ourselves down to the world of Thanksgiving, which is the time in which the year begins to end. This is the, the end of this is the beginning of the end of the calendar year. A little bit of anxiety, a little bit of trying to catch up and finish up in the calendar year for those that are in the business world, the end of the quarter, the end of the year. But this is a real great opportunity for us to take stock on our previous year and to use as an opportunity to grow. We should plan for Jan 1 to be an opportunity to create freshness. Wherever it comes, we need freshness. Weekly, monthly, annually. So yesterday we started to really delve into this concept that who we are is just a reality that exists regardless of what, whether or not it's seen by somebody else. And this is important, this is an, it's an important dichotomy to understand. I believe it's the Baal Shem Tov, the famous Baal Shem Tov that speaks about the idea of faith and says that for yourself, you need to have faith, but for others, you don't. What does that mean? It means that when you go through life and things happen and you're supposed to have faith, it's going to be okay. It's going to work out. God has a plan. But when someone comes to you with their problems, you're not supposed to say, well, just have faith. You're supposed to have no faith, if you will, and help them as if it was up to you. When it comes to your stuff, you can rely on God and you can rely on faith and you can rely on things bigger than yourself. But when someone else presents a problem to you, you can't say, you know what, you'll be fine. You know what, you don't need the money. Just rely on God. Your job is to act as if you have to do something. Same thing in this exact scenario. When it comes to others, we have to unlock it in them. Not because if we don't, it won't be there, but because we have the opportunity to give somebody something that they may not have found themselves. But it doesn't change the fact that it's a reality, whether somebody recognizes it or not. Whether we're learning it together now, maybe at age 40, 50, 60, or 70, or whether at 16, some teacher looked at you and said, yes, you can. It doesn't change the reality that's always been there. And it'll always be there, regardless of whether or not somebody realizes it or not. And once we start to digest this reality, which is me and you are built with the energy that is a ray of the divine, that means inside us, within us, is a property that is infinite, that will never die, that is eternal, that is qualitatively more powerful than anything in the physical world. Once that idea that awareness becomes a reality for our own thinking, then maybe in our past, somebody should have done something for us that they didn't. I heard some serious stuff throughout these past few days from, from many of your emails about the type of upbringing and the things that were said. Yeah. People drop the ball sometimes and say dumb things and say disempowering things. And that is unfortunate. But it doesn't have the impact on our lives if we recognize that regardless of whether or not somebody saw it or not, I still have it. I still have a treasure within. I'm still living with the energy that is the creator of humanity. And so my potential is limitless. That realization is 
the foundation of true greatness. It's the foundation of real greatness. And it begins to open our eyes to a reality that nobody knows but us. It is an intimate relationship that we start to build with our creator, not based on somebody telling us that if you don't do this ritual, the invisible man in the sky is going to get mad at you. Or after one dies, they're going to suffer in purgatory. Forget that stuff for a second. There is a concept of reward and punishment. There is a concept of certain things connect us to God. All that stuff is, is part of the larger perspective, but at the core, the beginning of a real, real relationship with the divine comes when you have something intimate to share, right? A husband and a wife have a unique relationship because they have something intimate to share. A parent and a child has something intimate to share. Friends have intimate things to share. There are things that they know about each other, whether they're written or spoken or just knowledge. When you look around at your relationships, at the core of your relationships is some bit of intimacy that takes place when you know somebody in a way that nobody knows them but you. If you look at your closest relationships, you'll see that there's a certain understanding that you have that is not shared with the whole world. That's part of one of the challenges happening today, believe it or not. As the, the lines between what I have that is, that is special to the people around me and what I share with the world is being blurred. I told you the story, I think once about um, a rabbi who called me, who were, who were talk, a rabbi who was talking about an issue. One of, I guess, his congregants had gotten married. I think we spoke about this. Now in the marriage process, the Jewish marriage ceremony, it sort of culminates in the, in the chuppah but then afterwards, there's a moment called the Yichud room. Yichud is Hebrew for connection, becoming one. So as the couple comes down off the chuppah, which is when they get actually married, they walk them to a room that is designed to be just for them. That's their first moment being married. And it's designed because the rabbis know how to do this. And the for everything follows the beginning everything follows the, the the first and the way jewish marriage is situated is that the first thing that happens to you is you have an intimate moment with your other and the hus the, the the now husband and wife go into this room for a few minutes and they're just alone and they have a moment to, to to speak and just to be alone with each other. And actually there are guards. Two of his friends are appointed to be the guards of the room. And the way it works, if you've been to a Jewish wedding is they dance these, this couple down from the chuppah and they dance them to the room. And then the, 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 the rabbi and the whatever, they push everybody away and everyone's still dancing and they push everybody away and two people stand guard and the couple go in to have an intimate moment with each other, just for two minutes. So the rabbi speaks about this concept that in this intimate moment of this one um, couple, this young couple, I think I told you the story, the bride pulls out her phone and insta she goes live on Instagram for the moment. Can you imagine? Like the groom is like, what? Do you, what? And she's like, well, no, let's, let's do this for everybody. Let's broadcast our moment of intimacy. And I don't blame her. Was she 21? No, the girl who did it was. There's a blurred line between what is intimate and what is shared with the world in today's day and age. 
But if you really want to build, build into what a relationship really is, it's, it's, it's the intimate things that I share with some people and not others. And the most intimate thing that you have in your life is your soul. The only person, that only thing that knows to the, the extent of it is God. That's the beginning of a relationship with the creator based on intimacy. And as you look out into the world, once this becomes a reality, and you start to realize that your value on this world is not what you do, your value on this world is that you exist. And I wanna really nail this because I got a great question of a woman who said to me that she's a wife and a mother and that she's um, engaged in a very fulfilling career and she's been sick and she's been in bed and she's feel, she feels a lack of worth because what, what is she worth if she can't do? And I emailed her back, your worth is not based on what you do. Your worth is based on that you exist. Because if your eyes are open, it's only open because you are pumping through your body divine energy. And that's the most valuable thing this physical world has. The existence of a human being is the existence of divine energy, which is more valuable than anything physical. So the fact that your eyes are open is more valuable than anything else in this world. So the value that we have in our lives is not contingent on our actions. The value that we have in our lives is, continued, is contingent on our existence. Now I, want, I want to just digest that for a second. Because I'm saying stuff that we got to digest. So I'm drinking so much coffee this morning for those that are with me video. And I want to give a shout out, by the way, not only to my Zoom crew, but to my Facebook crew. So thank you for being here. And thank you for being here live. And if you listen to it anytime, whether it's on podcast or on PDFs, thank you to everybody. Really, it means a lot to me. It really means a lot to me. This is a big deal for us to transition into this thinking. This isn't going to come easy because we live in a world where they valued us on what we do since we were little. We live in a world where we're almost devalued if we don't do. There's almost always somebody else telling us that if you don't do, then you are not as valuable. And if it's not that, then it's if you don't have, then you are not as valuable. In almost every culture that me and you exist in, Someone is telling us some version of this. Your value is based on either what you're doing, grades, uh, wealth, academic achievement, rituals, just name the thing that you need to do and then attach your value to that. And then either you will rise or fall with that tide or what you have. Who cares if you do it, what you have. So I don't care if you stole the money, if you have a lot of it and I can see it in your home, we're going to value you anyways. I don't care if you were born brilliant. If you get better grades than somebody else, then you're just considered to be uh, you know, brilliant. It doesn't really matter how. The doing it doesn't really value me. As long as you have it, I'm okay with it. But for most of us, we live in societies where those are the two things that we have. And what it does is it starts to, it, it conflates two different concepts the value of who I am and the value of what I do. Our core value in this world is that we are alive. That's it. That's the value. God chose us to have another day of life. And as a result, imbued, infused in us, his divine energy. The fact that we are the containers, the fact that we are the home of that level of holiness puts us in value, the diamond that is behind that glass box in the museum 
around a security system is valuable, not because somebody is using the diamond. It's because the diamond in itself is valuable. Just if you stare at it. Here's, by the way, I don't want to get into this because this is another world. This is the feminine energy in this world. The feminine energy is the energy of understanding the essence of holiness. It's the, it's the energy of the recognition that I, for myself, is valuable. Which is why I'm not for now. Typically, when it comes to effeminate people, they value things that, like, that, that, that adorn them jewelry and because there's there's physically there, there's a concept but also there's a spiritual piece to this maybe we'll do a men women class one day but there's a spiritual piece to the effeminate energy that believes in her core that i alone am valuable and worth adorning it's a whole nother conversation the masculine piece is the one that has to do 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 which is why I usually don't find you find the, the gifts that you give to the masculine energy are, are utilities. You buy your wife like a drill. Good luck. Things to do. Because the feminine energy understands in her core that her value is in her existence. That's the essence that we all have to understand. And if you don't get this, it's going to be hard to understand how to place do into your life. And there are those that are listening to me and you're rejecting it. I know. There are those that as you're hearing, you're like, no, 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 no. What are you talking about? Yeah. And what if I don't? What if I sit on a couch all day? Then I'm valuable. What if that person who does nothing all day? Then they're valuable. Like, then it did, and by the way, I'm the same way. Forget it. For me to be able to understand this concept, you can't even imagine what this takes for me. But if we don't get to this concept, the doing that we do is, is coming from the wrong place. If we don't understand that our value is in our being, then we start to do in a way for, for the wrong reasons. We don't do things to gain value. We do things because we recognize that we have so much potential in who we are that it would be a shame to live in this world and not exercise that level of doing. It would be a shame to have God give us his energy and not bring it out into the world. It would be a tragedy for us to be able to have this much value and do nothing with it. It doesn't make us more valuable. The value is the diamond that sits behind the glass box. But really, if it is the most beautiful diamond in the world, it's a shame to keep it into a museum. You should take it on the road for every human being to see. You should use it as a way to make more diamonds if you could. If somebody has a, a, a vaccine, I'm not get to that. If somebody has a cure for a disease, it is valuable into itself. It is the most brilliant put, it is the most brilliant work that's being done right now. It would, it's valuable in itself and it's worth millions of dollars just for itself. But it would be a shame if we didn't take that cure and bring it out to the entire world. The Torah sits behind an ark adorned in a crown covered with a velvet covering because we're saying the Torah in its own is valuable. We're going to put it in a place of value. The value isn't based on what somebody does with it. It would take away from it. The value is in itself, but it would be a shame to have this book of wisdom and not have the whole world be able to learn from it. Who we are who we are is infinitely valuable, period, end of story. And the more we stop to understand that, the more we breathe that in, the more we breathe in that concept, that who we are is infinitely valuable, 
the more the lack of honor that came to us starts to diminish, the more the desire for somebody else to feel good about themselves start to increase, the less, the more I need to be competitive to feel valuable decreases. I don't need to fight you to feel valuable. I don't need to disparage you to feel valuable. I don't need your opinions to be wrong for mine to be right. I don't need you to not have for me to feel like I have. I get to enjoy your successes because they don't pull away from my success because how much more can I possibly have than to be the infinite, to be connected to the infinite source? And if we don't take the time to think about this, that is the greatest shame of all time. If we have a diamond and we don't have enough time to go look at that diamond, what a tremendous tragedy. They, they shipped the greatest diamond of all time into your backyard. It's in your house. You can't even go look at the diamond. You're too busy to look at the diamond. God's like, you joking me? I gave you me. Me. I gave you me. You can't even look at me? You're too busy running around to make somebody else feel like you're good? You need someone else to pat you on the back? We're constantly in need of other people telling God's like, are you out of your mind? Me. Me. God. Yeah. The person you're waiting I made that person. All those fans, I made those fans. Mm -hmm. I made the money. I did, I did all of it. And I'm inside you. You can't even look at me for a minute. Slow down. Just look at me. We can't have an intimate moment together. You can't for one second stop with the world. Put the phone down. And just look internally and see that I'm there. And I gave you the greatest gift, which is me. When you do that, when we do that, we breathe differently. The honor is different. Once we have a strong B, we can talk about doing. Until that B is strong, doing becomes a desperate plea for someone to look at my B. If you really want to do great things in life, it has to come off a platform of a strong B, not as a compensation to a weak B. And it begins by taking a minute to realize who we are. All right, we'll continue this. Oh, if we knew who we were, if I knew who I was, if you knew who you were, forget about it. This world would be a different place. All right, we're going to do it together. We're going to try at least. Thank you guys for being here today. We'll continue with God's help. Think about this today a little bit. Take a minute on the clock, 60 seconds. Begin this process of having an intimate, an intimate moment with your divine self. It's powerful stuff. All right. Have a great day. Can't wait to see you tomorrow with God's help.